Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and I've had a couple of people in video comments in the last few days bring up uh, whole food plant-based diets, and yeah, it's generally agreed upon by experts around the world, registered dietitians, that whole food plant-based diets are usually going to be the most healthy type of diet, but what does that even mean? Because this creates a big point of contention. So uh, let me put on my plus five out of weaponsmithing. Work on skilling up my crafting a little bit and let's talk about this. All right, when we say whole food plant-based diets, that means that your food is mostly whole foods and that probably 80%, at least 80% of your calories are coming from plants, plant sources. Uh, it's going to be a diet high in starch, high in fiber. All right, this, this isn't difficult to uh, understand and it's generally going to be a lower fat diet. All right, uh, and what gets interesting here, you have a couple different groups who create big arguments with this and they want to argue about it in different ways because they want to extrapolate different things from this. Uh, and that's going to be like bodybuilder types, bodybuilders in general, and then vegans. These two groups really seem to struggle with this and understanding what it actually means and they want to uh, try to make claims that aren't really true. All right, so let's, let's get into that a little bit. Number one, uh, the bodybuilders will get upset because it's like, how can they get 80% of their uh, calories from plants if they're still going to get their enormous amounts of protein? You know, if they're going to consume three or 400 grams of protein. Well, the reality is uh, that's there's no need to consume that much protein. There is no data out there suggesting that anyone needs that much protein uh, to gain muscle mass, even at an optimal rate. Uh, that just isn't true. The top sports uh Dietitians in the world don't believe that, and they coach the top athletes in the world, many of whom need large amounts of muscle mass. How about NFL players? How about Olympic lifters? Uh, a lot of these people competing at very, very high elite levels, uh, even their dietitians know they don't need to be consuming 400 grams of protein. But yeah, that becomes difficult uh, to consume 80% plant products uh, for your calories if you're doing that, particularly if you're consuming any sort of uh, fatty protein source. So the, the issue we run into there is that, uh, think about that for a moment. If you're consuming 300 grams of protein, pretty much even from animal sources, that's pretty much 1,200 calories right there, uh, plus whatever fat is in there and, and so on. So you could end up with, uh, on a, say a 3,000 calorie diet, that's well over 20%. Well over 20%. Actually, it's a little early in the morning. Let me see if I can do the math in my head. But yeah, that's 40, like 40%. Uh, but the thing is, uh, they can argue all they want, but body composition is not the same as health and fitness, all right? Just because you consume huge amounts of protein, number one, doesn't mean you're going to have more muscle mass. And while muscle mass itself does stave off many long-term uh, health effects, uh, it's not the be-all, end-all, though it is extremely important. And that has been noted in longevity and, and studies that extra muscle mass does offer a lot of protection against degenerative diseases. Uh, and that includes not just things that break your body down, but things like diabetes, heart attacks, all of that. We know it does. Uh, but that comes from your weightlifting in a moderately high protein diet. Uh, these extremely high protein diets people come with, up with are insane. But if you're sticking with what the top experts recommend for strength athletes uh, who need to bulk up and gain muscle mass, they'll tell you 1 to 1.6 grams of protein per kilogram of body weight. So if you weigh uh, 90 kilos, that's around 200 pounds, that's somewhere between 90 and 150 grams of protein. Well, 150 grams of protein uh, is not difficult to get. Not difficult to get at all. Uh, not really. You can still consume animal products and hit that really easily. Uh, it won't take very much to reach that. But uh, this idea that they need all this protein uh, for this is a bit crazy. And here's the thing. We don't have any long-term studies on these sort of protein intakes. And it is arguable that they could put stress and strain on the body. Uh, that, you know, Yeah, in the short term, you might be fine. But consuming 300 or 350 grams of protein every day for 20 years straight, uh, we don't have long-term studies on that. But yeah, that could cause some harm over time. And it's nowhere near ideal. It's not ideal at all. Uh, again, are we talking about health and fitness? Are you guys talking about purely purely body composition? But at the end of the day, that much protein has never been required for ideal body composition. This is kind of a, a myth inside of another industry. Now, the other thing, uh, vegans will then extrapolate it and say, well, ha, huh, plant-based, that means only plants. So, so if eating a diet low, somewhat low in animal products is the healthiest, then that would mean eating no animal products is even healthier. Other than that's not supported by the data. 
That is not supported by the data. All they will pull back on is one little tiny population. They'll look at seven day Adventists. Uh, and uh, that's all they have to go on. But the thing is, the longest lived, healthiest population in the world, uh, which is the Okinawans, who do follow a plant based whole food diet, where they get most of their calories from starches. And again, they consume animal products. They consume eggs in small amounts. They consume fish. They consume pork. They consume poultry. All right. Uh, these people are the longest lived, healthiest population on earth. Now, they follow a very, very high carb, high fiber, high starch diet. All right. But it, it's moderate in protein mainly because their calories don't go extremely high. Um, but again, we're talking about a population that still eats animal products. And what vegans don't understand, if this was true, then vegan populations would actually be really healthy. But they're not. Demographically around the world, vegans don't seem to be healthier or live any longer than the general population. So their theory just doesn't work. Yet the, the populations that do best when we look at specific diets, the majority of them still consume Animal products are just in moderation. And the way that we get to a plant-based diet, here's the thing. When it comes to your animal products, uh, how do you get fair amounts of animal products in uh, without it going over maybe 20% of your total calories? Leaner protein sources. And the reality is we show various health benefits. There's no data other than like this Dr. Campbell stuff, which is he's considered not to be a reputable source in the nutrition world because his data hasn't ever panned out in humans. Nothing that he has ever proposed from his rat studies about protein being a cause of cancer and everything else, it hasn't been found to be true in further studies. All right, other human studies where we look at massive amounts of data, it just doesn't seem to be true. This is his own little pet theory from the 1950s. Uh, it hasn't panned out. And so you can't use that when all the other experts are saying, no, it just doesn't seem to be the case. Um, in fact, the lean dairy seems to be good for people as long as you're not... Uh, having a problem with the lactose in it there's no problem there none at all and a lot of dairy doesn't have lactose so um, the, the vegans who throw this out there aren't looking at the data and in fact the longest lived population on earth still eats meat but yeah you can you can totally be on a plant-based diet whole food plant-based diet and still be consuming meat every day or fat-free dairy and that's generally the way it works lean cuts of protein uh, you could get away with a nice lean elk steak or venison steak every day. You can get away with grilled chicken breast or fat-free Greek yogurt. All these things can be consumed every day as an additional beneficial protein source, additional source of uh, varied nutrition. Get everything from your B12 uh, to a lot of other things, to iron, zinc, and things that might be lacking in someone's diet who isn't eating animal products. Uh, there's a lot of nutritional benefits to that, and you could still do that on a whole food plant-based diet. What you're looking to cut out on a whole food plant-based diet is going to be highly refined products, refined sugars, uh, highly refined grain sources, large amounts of saturated fat, uh, all these vegetable oils. All right, three out of those four are still from plants. Most of your saturated fats coming from animal products. So the idea, and this is again what most nutritionists around the world have noted. You're going to be healthier and live longer if you follow a diet that cuts out those things or moderates them, cuts them down to a very moderate amount. And most of your calories are coming from higher fiber, starchy plant sources. And that doesn't mean just green vegetables. That means it could mean everything from potatoes to rice to oats to various grains, beans, legumes, things like that, uh, along with lots of vegetables and, and fruit to some extent. But yeah, starch-based diets that are high in fiber um, with minimally processed food in them. That is what a whole food plant-based diet is, that probably where at least 80% of your calories are coming from those things. And you're cutting out most of the vegetable oils, refined sugars, other refined carbs, saturated fat. Uh, you're, you're limiting those things. That's all it really means. And if you do those things and you moderate those things, this is the sort of diet most of the experts in the world are saying is going to be ideal for your health. Uh, it's going to be ideal for your health. So what you're looking at is most likely it's going to be starchy carbohydrates as your main calorie source, protein way down the list as a second, and then a fairly low fat diet. Uh, in which you have lots of fiber in it, lots of fiber, lots of vegetables. That is the ideal healthy diet based upon all the data that's been extrapolated around the world. 
uh, and that doesn't necessarily go mean a vegan or a vegetarian diet, and that doesn't mean that uh, current bodybuilder style diets where some of them are loading 300 and 400 grams of protein a day into their diet. Right? That's not uh, what we're talking about here. Those are kind of very, very different from what we're talking about with a whole food plant-based diet. All right, guys, but that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I will talk to you guys next time.